Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Today we're going to be talking about my method and the basics to getting rid of dyno in a reef tank. Now, before we get into that, I do want to apologize for not having uh, any content yesterday. Uh, basically, I worked all day and then I had training in the evening. By the time I got home, it was closer to 10 p.m. and I looked in the mirror, my face was a little puffy, uh, which is pretty common after uh, you know that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I just wasn't able or even capable of making a video last night, so I do apologize, and uh, hopefully we'll make up for it in, with a decent one today. So uh, anyway, so yeah, you guys have been asking about Dino over and over and over again, and uh, I've talked about it. I do offer Dino identification on the website. We can talk about that here in a little bit, but uh, it is something that is very common in our community. I mean, a lot of people are dealing with Dino because our equipment's so good, and everyone's still stuck in the mindset that low, low, low nutrients is best and our corals want that, all that kind of stuff. So a lot of us still have the mindset of that and unfortunately it is, uh, it's causing further issues. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about the basics. Again, I have some notes here, you guys will see me looking down too. So the first thing you wanna do with dino from the very beginning is identify what species it is. Now there are thousands of types of dino out in the ocean, but our community only has about a handful that are really common. And what's good is about 70% of those are all treated the same way. There is a small amount of them that uh, require special attention, but the only way you're really going to know what route to go when it comes to uh, curing your dino is to identify what species it, is, species it is. Now, again, I do offer dino identification on the website. Uh, tons and tons and tons of people have used that over the last year or two, and uh, it works out. You send me a sample, I look under a microscope, I tell you what it is, I send you a plan back, and uh, everything's good from there. The rest of it's on you, you gotta do what the plan says. I can't, uh, I can't come to your house and, and fix it for you, but either way, uh, if you have a microscope or an ability to get one or use one or borrow one or if you're going to school or whatever, uh, you want to take some of your dyno, put it underneath there, and identify it. There are some stuff and some forms and stuff on the website uh, or on the internet where you can kind of match the image of the dyno you see in the microscope to what it is and then you can go from there. But uh, for the sake of this video and the sake of kind of getting all the information out, I'm just going to address the common uh, type which is uh, that 70% or so that all have the same issue and they're there for the same reason. So. When it comes to dyno, uh, the very first thing that you have to realize is most of the time you have it is because you have very low nitrates and phosphates. Uh, not always, you know, if you're if you're you know a little bit below a certain you know, the average range, that's okay. I'm talking about low, low, like zero or just above zero. Um, if you are in that range on either nitrates or phosphates, uh, you are in danger of getting dyno. It's just one of those things. Now, uh, one thing that I get question all the time and I can make a separate video on this or a separate guide on this is can you have dyno and algae in your reef tank at the same time and yes absolutely because your uh, algae will utilize the nitrates and phosphates that are in the tank and causing the, the water column itself to basically be zero and that's when the dyno will come in and uh, start growing so yes you can have that and again if you guys want a separate video on that feel free to let me know in the comment section I can work on that and uh, kind of do the same thing now when it comes to uh, basically dyno, I, in my opinion, I think that dyno is always in your reef tank. I think it's always there, but only shows its face when you have the low nitrates and the low phosphates. At that point, um, not, if you're not aware of this, nitrates and phosphates provide food for beneficial bacteria that actually consume and control dyno. It's just one of those things. So if you don't have the food to keep those that bacteria alive, or those organisms alive, then they're not able to consume the dino, and that's when the dino can get a foothold and produce and grow and kind of go out of control at that point. So, um, yeah. And so some of you guys might be wondering, hey, can I just dump in a bunch of beneficial bacteria or a Dr. Tim's this or Dr. Tim's that? Uh, I've used that stuff in the past and it didn't work. Adding bacteria to the system just didn't work because I don't think those products are necessarily adding the correct organism or bacteria that will consume dino. Uh, you can, I mean, you can add all sorts of types, but if it's not the type that consumes dino, you're, you're just wasting your money at that point. So uh, the first thing you want to do, and we can talk about it here, is how to get rid of dino. The first thing is to increase your nutrients. Get off of zero. Now, of course, you don't want to go too fast. You don't want to do what I do and just dump a bunch of crap in and hope for the best. Uh, you want to test consistently and be uh, dosing accordingly. Now, um, I do recommend that you stay between three to five ppms of nitrates. If you have dyno, focus on the five-ish. Get it closer to five, the higher it is, it's better. I mean, of course, don't go to 15 or 20 or 30 or 40, but you know, five is good, stay there and uh, keep it there. You know, be consistent. If you, if you find that your nutrients are 
kind of wavy, then start dosing them automatically. Uh, that's a great way to uh, increase those nutrients and keep them stable and consistent. Um, you know, there's other methods like auto feeding and stuff like that. If you can't be home to dose or feed, uh, those methods will also help uh, keep stable nitrates and phosphates. Now, the next thing you want to do, which is really important and can be confusing when I say this, is you need to do daily manual removal of the dyno. Um, and people are like, well, I can't do a water change uh, because it's going to lower my nutrients. That's correct. So you need to find a method to remove the dyno every single day without doing a water change. Now, ooh, how do you do that, right? So for me personally, I do use a filter sock holder. I have some on the website. You can check them out. I'm just plugging shit because that's what I do. It's going to do it. Um, not on purpose. It just kind of happens. But anyway, I use a filter sock. Um, micron doesn't really matter at this point. You're just trying to get it out, okay? Um, now, go ahead and siphon all that stuff into the filter sock, dump that water back into the tank, and then just keep repeating the cycle over and over again. The filter sock's full, toss it in the cleaning bar barrel or bucket or whatever you have for filter socks, put a new one in, and keep doing that. Now, if you have filter socks or filter pads within your reef tank, of course, change those out daily or every other day. Kind of, you know, it's going to be situational, but uh, the what you want to do is you want to get that dyno in the water column, get it into the filter socks, or manually remove it or siphon it out. Point is, is getting it out of the system uh, as quickly as possible. I had a kink in my neck there. I'm sore as shit. <laughs> I'm over here stretching. Anyways, um, you want to remove that stuff as quickly as possible uh, because if it's out of the system, it can't reproduce, it can't continue to grow, and it gives the beneficial bacteria and organisms a chance to, uh, you know, grow and reproduce and be able to outcompete the dyno. Now, next thing you want to do is utilize a UV sterilizer. I have one on the system here. I have one pretty much on any system just because I like the clarity of the water. But using a UV will definitely help damage the cell of the, of the dyno, of course, not allowing it to reproduce, and then you know going down the chain and, and helping to remove it over time. Now, it's not an end-all, be-all, but it does help in the whole overall game of uh, uh, you know taking over the dyno. Now, the next thing here is stop, and this is important, Stop your aminos, your supplements, anything, any additives, color programs, any of that crap that feeds coral. Uh, not necessarily food, because you could feed coral food if you want. Uh, it's probably going to break down to nitrates and phosphates anyways, which will probably help elevate your reef tank. But uh, if you're doing aminos, supplements, aqua vitro fuel, all that kind of stuff, you need to stop that completely for at least two weeks after the last sign of dyno is gone. Um, and if you ever find that your nutrients are kind of lower, I, I kind of weed off that stuff anyways because I have a feeling, hey, I can't get my nutrients in check. I should probably stop dosing this stuff because I'm going to end up with dino. So stop those things because all it does is just feed dino. That's it. It just feeds it. Okay? Um, don't ask me how. It just does. Uh, for personal experience and seeing other people, uh, stopping those uh, elements, those supplements, that kind of stuff has all been beneficial in removing it, uh, removing dino from your system. Now, uh, the next thing here is uh, you can feed phytoplankton. I'm not really sure. I, I was going to do a test in the past about see if phytoplankton would feed on dino. Uh, there might be somebody out there who did it. I just haven't had the opportunity. Uh, but I don't necessarily think it feeds on dino possibly could. What I do think is that it ends up dying in the water column and, and in turn uh, increasing your nutrients. That's that's kind of where I'm leaning towards. But uh, if you want to dose phytoplankton, it's not going to hurt. It's only going to benefit you either by it feeding on the dino or it's uh, dying and turning into nitrates and phosphates. Uh, now, some things that you should avoid, as I mentioned, you do not want to do water changes. Uh, water changes are just going to lower your nutrients continually and just kind of continuing the problem. And uh, when it comes to doing water changes after dyno is gone, uh, just like your supplements, I would at least wait two weeks if you can to do a water change. Um, it, again, if you have detritus and stuff like that in your tank, you can go ahead and use the filter sock method to get rid of that and then just dump the water back in. But uh, yeah, try to avoid water changes if you can, just because again, you don't want to lower those nutrients even further and just kind of you know playing the YOLO game. Is that, is that is it YOLO? I don't know. I don't think that's the term, but I don't really care at this point. The up and down game. So. I was going to go the way there. But anyways, uh, so let's see here. Do I got anything else? Yep, nope. I think that's it. That's pretty much a list of things. Uh, so hopefully this will help at least get you started and move you in the right direction. So if you have Dino, at least try these things and see how it works out if you have a problem with it or, you, or you're or you not really sure if you're doing the right thing. Again, you can uh, check out the uh, Dino identification or look yourself and, um, you know, Figure out what it is, figure out what type it is, what species it is, um, and then you know go from there. Uh, feel free if you want. I, I can't promise a quick turnaround time on this answer, but if you know the name of the dyno, if you've identified it yourself, and uh, and you kind of want to know if it's the type that you have to increase your nutrients or do another method, feel free to let me know. You can email me. But again, the turnaround time on that is going to be like the rest of my emails. It, it takes a little while. So uh, yeah, 
feel free to do that. Other than that, I think that's it. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Any uh, questions, uh, feel free to put them in the comment section. And if you want to be part of one of these videos, put those questions in there because the more questions you ask, the more videos I can make. It's easier to make videos when you guys ask questions. And uh, also the uh, engagement is good for the algorithm. So we always want that, right? Anyways, that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you later. Peace.